The thing to understand about plaster is it's a very, very, very common, very cheap product. It was originally found in Paris, which is why you have plaster of Paris. It's also gypsum. This is known as number one pottery plaster, which you can purchase at a clay supply store. It's used for more detailed work. The plaster will capture any detail that you carve into a pot or that you want transferred from one surface to the other. The pot that I did that was the most challenging was, you probably all heard, some of you haven't heard this story, I made a mold of my husband's hand. And body casting is sort of the, the most complicated thing you can cast to reproduce because of all of the fingerprints and the creases. But when I made the casting of his hand, I had to carefully figure out where the mold would separate and he put his hand in the plaster, and the plaster started to harden over the mold. And then the problem was, <laughs> it heated up as it, as it was starting to harden around the hand. Um, it had to actually be removed from his hand, and I had to take into consideration the arm hair that was then trapped in the plaster. So my husband found out firsthand what waxing feels like, but he, he had to go to that ahead of time, but every detail of his hand was transferred into the plaster. So you can do very, very detailed transferring of details, which is why almost everything that is reproduced in industry today makes use of a mold. If you go home and look around your house, anything that is made out of plastic, rubber, metal, glass, it was all made with a mold because each and every little detail, your cell phone is probably 80% mold and you know the, the casing for the cell phone, the switchboard, each of those little components can be designed and then reproduced to the most minute little detail. So I'm going to start mixing up some plaster to the bar. So once the you've clay. created your mold, your piece that you want to duplicate, and you have something that surrounds it completely, you want to make sure that it's not going to ooze out all over the table. If you use a very flimsy cardboard box and you pour it full of plaster, which is very wet, you're going to get a big sloppy mess, I know from experience. So make sure you're using something that will contain the plaster. You know that the plaster is ready when it, your finger in the plaster leaves a slight impression, and you want to pour it right at that moment when it's not too liquidy and not too hard, which is right now. And you can either pour directly over the item or along the side. I'm going to pour it right over the top. And it fills in around all of those cracks and hardens. And it's an actual chemical process. You never, ever, 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 ever want to pour plaster into a sink because it will not wash out of your sink catch basin. It will harden at the base of your sink and it will clog it and you'll have to replace all of your plumbing. So ceramic studios have an entirely different setup for washing out plaster. It's usually let allowed to settle in a bucket and harden. And it can actually be cast underwater because it is a chemical process. It will start to actually heat up in about 10 minutes. I'll pass it around and you can feel the heat coming off of the plaster as it starts to harden. So I, I was uh, mixing up rather quickly, but let me give you just the, the way that you mix up a good batch of plaster is you always start with the water. You can weigh it and measure it, but the easy way is you start with the water and you add the plaster to the water a little bit at a time. You can either sift it in your hand or you can sift it in directly. And you want to do what they call a mountain method. As the plaster starts to saturate the water, it starts to settle and settle and settle, and eventually you'll get little peaks. And that's when you know it's time to start mixing the plaster. And then you mix it until you get that just to the consistency of a really, really dense bisque soup where you could run your finger through it and you see the impression. And then once you have it all put together, you want to tap it to see if there's any little bubbles that have caught the air, because any of those little bubbles create pits. And just like we said, it'll capture even a, a fingerprint of a detail. Each of those little bubbles becomes part of your mold that you don't want in your mold. You didn't plan that in there. So you want to tap it to get all the air out, and you'll see the little bubbles rising to the top. And then you just let it sit for a little while. I think in about half an hour, maybe 10 minutes, it'll start to get warm, and I'll pass it around. So once you've got all of that done, You can pop it out, and that's essentially what you get is the, the outside of it, but with your clay on the inside. So you remove the clay, and you have to kind of clean around as you go, and this the becomes clay that a mold. Remove, it's called a waste mold because you have to throw that away. First of all, your original was destroyed, and second of all, you couldn't put it in a kiln and fire it because if you put plaster in a kiln, it will explode. So plaster and clay do not mix if you're going to fire it. You have to keep everything very, very separate and very, very clean. But once you've removed the clay, this is our finished mold. 
Matt was poured an hour ago, so it's very, very moist still. Even though it's hardened, it's still very solid with water. So you have to let it cure at least two weeks and let all of that water evaporate. And what's going to happen is it's going to open up the pores in the plaster. So you're going to create basically a sponge, a solid, rigid sponge. And the idea is you're going to pour clay into the plaster mold. And the clay is basically the exact same stuff that they're working on. It's just got more water in it. And the way that it's been accomplished to create this liquid form is it's been, it's been uh, doctored up with sodium silica, which helps the water disperse. So you can keep uh, the same uh, properties of the clay without it just turning into a messy soup. It still wants to stay together, but with a lot less water than without this product. So that's what takes it from what they're working on to what I have in this jar, which is basically just watery clay. So you take your cured plaster mold and you're going to pour in all the way to the top the slit. They call it slit. It looks a little bit like chocolate syrup. To not drink it. And you pour it in to the top and you just are going to let it sit. And what's happening right now is that the water is being sucked into the plaster. So on the edge of the, the plaster mold, it's going to start to build up solid clay like they're using over here without all of the extra water. So as the water soaks out, the level is going to start to dip. So you're going to have to keep topping it off so you have your level remain the same of the clay. And then at some point, you're going to have enough of a wall built up that it's essentially the wall of your pot, and you pour the slip back into your jar or you throw it away. In big production facilities, they recycle it. Uh, maintaining the consistency and the properties. I recycle it, so that's, you know, I think you can keep using it over and over again until it doesn't pour anymore. But basically, once you've poured that out, you then have the hollow version of whatever you've cast. Now, you've got this messy lip because you've poured it back in, so you've gotten a big mess here. You can either clean that while it's in the mold, or you can pop it out messy and then clean it out. I tend to like to clean it out before I pop it out, and you just run a tool along that edge, and it comes away very, very easily from your plaster. It just peels right off. And then once it's started to build up the wall, it continues to dry and evaporate and shrink. So it's going to actually pull away from the plaster. And then it's a matter of you just hit it a couple of times and out pops your pot. And you can make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds with the same mold. They do start to deteriorate in quality. So if you have very, very fine details, you'll have to make new molds. But if you don't care so much about it, you can make hundreds and hundreds. And then once you have your rough piece, you have to go back and clean up those edges a little bit. But, you know, put in a hole in this case. But essentially that's finished. It's ready to be either bisque fired or glazed. So that's the entire process from... Oh, we can certainly pass that around. Okay. That's the entire process. So, so my part here is done. If there's any questions, yes. So once you pop it out of the mold, do you have to let the mold dry? You, you can, in some cases, reuse it immediately because it will have enough porosity to do the same process again. But depending on how large it is and how wet your, your clay was, in some cases you would want to let it dry overnight, at most two days, and then it's ready to go again. Yes? How do you know if you've established the right thickness? It, you know, that's a good question. Um, it's really just a feel thing. You just kind of look at it. It's that pouring consistency. You know, you want that kind of chocolate syrup. If it's just real wet, soupy, it'll still, it could potentially still work, but it would just take a lot longer for the plaster to suck it up. And at some point, the plaster would reach saturation. You might have just a real, real thin wall of clay. So you want it to be just wet enough that you can pour it. And then you wait how long? Okay, so I've poured this one, and you can already start to see, if you tilt it a little bit, you can see how it's already clinging to the wall. You can see it's starting to form that wall. This little one I'll leave for probably about 10 minutes for it to get about a, about a nickel size thickness, a little bit more, and then you pour it back in. So the whole process, start to finish, I poured the, the test one an hour ago, and I poured that test one an hour ago. So the whole process, start to finish, can be done in about an hour for something this size. For something larger, you would make it longer. But about that size, it can all be done in an hour. That's a nice Thank you. Excellent, Michelle. Good job.